So I had a request to show how I mixed up my paint. So today I'm going to show you how I make a few of these different types of paint and give you some tips on how I stir up my paint, which might be a little different than other people. So the first thing you'll need is, so you'll need some blood flow troll and I get it in the gallon and you really want to shake it up really well before you use it. So I actually put them in these little squeeze bottles for ketchup or whatever, um, but I don't really have that much in here right now, so we'll have to mix up a few more, so I'll show you how I do that. Um, so I'm going to have to say that I've written on here thicker because this float trowel has been very, 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 very thin, and if you use this by itself, it's going to be really, really thin. You're going to have to add a ton of paint, and so I've actually been kind of cheating, and I've been putting it in Home Depot jars, and then... And then I'll just pour it in here, leave it on the counter for a few days, and every time I go by I'll stir it. And that really just evaporates out some of the liquid so it becomes a little thicker. And actually I have quite a few containers and I'll just leave them and kind of stir as I remember. It'll make a film on top, but it doesn't matter because you have to filter this stuff anyway. But that's how I kind of reduce it down um, so that it's a lot thicker and you don't have to use as much paint. Um, I used it straight out of the bottle because I was in a hurry one time and it was just so liquidy. It really didn't work for me, so I have slightly bigger ones that I can't find right now, but just put them in there. If you go by every few hours, you can stir it, and after a day or two, depending on your humidity, it will be a little bit thicker. So that's one of the things I do first. So that's actually what's in here is my thickened up one. So I'm going to filter these a little bit, fill up my squeeze bottles so we can make um, some paints. So actually, I use these these little like drain stopper things. They came as a two pack. Um, so this one fits perfectly in the little container. If you pour slowly, it doesn't make a mess. And then this one, I usually just hold while I pour because a little bit more can come through this one. So let's just go ahead and make some of this. If you keep it in the center, it won't spill out all over the sides, but this takes too long, so usually I do this. Once you get it on the edge, the wheel start to make a little mess on the bottle, but that's okay. And it's full, so it's incredibly heavy right now. So I know a lot of people use the uh, pantyhose on the bottle, but that really just didn't work for me. I guess maybe because I made it thicker. I mean, you'd have to be sitting there all day to get into filters, so I really prefer these bottles. I'm just going to make two so we have enough to finish this. I also like to have it in a squeeze bottle because then... You know, you make sure paint the day before, and it, some of them, like Amsterdam paints, really kind of thicken up overnight. So this way I have a little bit I can squirt in there as I'm just about to use them. You know, you don't want to pull all this stuff out every single time. So I like to have a few bottles just ready. And I also use it in the balloon paintings to thin, thin them down if I need to. So I actually have probably about five of these bottles filled up. Okay. If you do use these bottles, you really do want to clean up some of this edge stuff and wash them out once in a while because they'll get little crusty chunks on them that will end up falling in your painting. But these are pretty clean since I washed them all out not too long ago. So the other thing that I add, I don't know if it's really necessary, I've never ever had a paint crack, but I hear people talk about paint cracking so I don't know if it's the humidity of where you live, but I add this GAC 800 and it's for, it helps prevent cracking, and just because I'll forget to add it to each individual cup, I usually add three drops or so. Sometimes I add a little bit more if I'm putting satin enamels into it because it has a little more tendency to crack, but I don't really use satin enamels much because I don't really like the pebble effect that it gives. I know it works well for other people, but I get kind of a pebbly mess, so I don't know if it's just me. Shake it up. Okay, so now we have what we need. 
This also helps it dry a little bit slower, so you don't want to put a whole ton in there. Could be waiting like weeks for things to dry, but here everything seems to dry kind of fast even, <laughs> even as I'm kind of using it. So I, I do like to add a little bit of this in there. Okay, so I'm going to mention this. This is the Liquitex pouring medium. I don't recommend this at all because it dries practically before you can move the canvas, so it makes life really difficult. Um, I bought this because it was in the store. When I first started during the pandemic, there was just no supplies available, and I'm impatient, so I was waiting for everything else to come in. And so I said, okay, let's try this. And it will pretty much just be dry before you can even finish. Um, I've watched some videos with Gina DeLuca. She uses this and she seems to have the same problem. So it might do great things, maybe if you add just a little, but I really, as you can see, I didn't really use very much of it because it was so impossible to use. So I probably wouldn't try this if you're new because you don't have any time to work with it change your mind to where you want to move things, so not recommended. I do recommend that we are going to use this Liquitex gloss medium. It's not called gloss medium and varnish anymore. Um, you can use this to make pigments and other things. Um, that's actually why I had this to begin with. Um, so I had the little bottle and then you can buy it in these large jars here. Um, don't buy this at Michael's. It's like $80 at Michael's. Um, but it's only like $50 if you buy it directly from Liquitex on Amazon or, or Liquitex itself. So just go straight to Liquitex because they have it in stock and weirdly enough it's cheaper. So I just use this container and I fill up these little containers. It's a little easier to use. One other thing that we need. Because of the temperature, I actually started pouring this January in 2021. And it was cold obviously out even here. And so I had no problem, I just used Floatrol and had no issues. And then when March hit, I was trying to do my paintings and they were just all out of control and I had no control over where the fluid was going. And so that's when I started to realize that the temperature makes the Floatrol a little bit more liquidy. And so I had so much trouble getting them to work that I basically gave up. Um, so this is what I came up with to work with it more in the summertime and it's also really good for really cheap paints, um, like the craft paints or other other paints that aren't very thick, this will help you. So I use um, extra heavy gel gloss. This is golden. I actually usually use the one from Michaels. It doesn't really matter the brand at all. I haven't noticed any difference. But another pandemic issue was I couldn't get this from anywhere. So I ended up buying an expensive golden one. But it's basically just a thick gel. You don't want to put a blob of this directly from the jar. It will be clumpy for a really long time. So if you have time to make it a day ahead, then that's fine. But if you don't have time to make it a day ahead of time, you're just going to have clumps in there that just won't go away. I have this jar here. So one of the things that I do is I'll take this and I'll add it. So when it gets to this point, and usually overnight it will go from chunky to liquidy, so usually I'll make up the paint that I can and if I run out I'll add some of this and then some float draw, mix it up and then leave it and it will come out like this. So when it gets like this you can add it directly to your paints and not have to worry about chunks. So that's why I always have like a little side container with this in it so that we can directly use it and I can work on it without having to wait too long. So you might wonder why you wouldn't just add more paint until it's thick enough and why you would do this instead. So I'm going to show you a painting that I did back when it first started to get warm out. So this painting, it looks okay. You can kind of see. It's okay, but it's really dark. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the light. It was actually really beautiful when I first poured it. You can kind of see here. It had like a coral leaf effect with some pink and some gold and it was beautiful. In regular light, this just looks basically purple now. And so the problem was I added, you know, enough paint to make it thick and then when it dried it just slowly started to eat all the other colors. So adding extra paint really is not ideal. Um, 
if you have Prussian blue, it'll do this. I have another painting I did on the same day, but it was like so beautiful. You can kind of see some of the remnants of it, how pretty it would have been if it hadn't sucked all the color out of it. Um, so that's why I don't just add extra paint. And kind of if you've ever seen some other pouring artists, they use um, the mix, the mix pouring medium that I think Krista Rasmussen makes. I haven't tried it yet myself because I have 5,000 cups of pre-mixed stuff and I don't think they're supposed to be mixed together. But her, her solution is really thick and so you don't have to add that much paint so you get what she says is really nice transparency. And the transparency is because you don't have a whole ton of extra paint in there. So if you add a dark color and you just keep adding the paint in, you're, you're not going to see anything else that you put in there with it. But if you put this clear gel instead, you'll actually be able to see the colors um, with the different colors mixed together. So that's another reason because you'll lose all some, some of the cool effects that you'll get by mixing the colors together. So if you use dioxazine purple, Prussian blue, Payne's gray, those will just suck up all of your color. Um, anything else that you put in there. Okay, so the next thing that I have is I have these five ounce cups. I think I got these. Looks like Walmart brand. Um, so I have five ounce cups. They come with lids. And so I like to make them ahead of time and that way I don't really have that much time to paint usually during the week. Might have an hour or two so I don't, I don't want to have to mix paints up and then store them in the cups like this. It's kind of an organizational nightmare. And that kitchen is already full of paint cups. So I like to have them ready to go whenever I have time to paint. So I use these and then since I've been doing bigger paintings lately I've been using these cups from Amazon. They claim to be 8 ounces but they're more like 6 so it's just a little bit extra volume. Um, so that's what I recommend if you think you're going to use colors like Prussian blue or white often. I use those in almost every painting, so I want a larger cup of those. So today, I'm going to do this Cerulean by Master's Touch, which this Master's Touch works okay, the thick body. Um, this Master's Touch, I don't think works very well. It just, whatever fillers they use in there, it basically sinks, no matter how much you dilute it with water. So I use this to make my... Um, I have I have containers and this this is just kind of thinned version that I put on as the flow extender so I always have white and a, a darker blue those are basically the two colors I use the most so I don't really recommend this brand either but if that's all you can get just know that you might have to add a lot of water to keep it from sinking I also have that problem with artist loft white it tends to sink a lot too um, all right so here's here's what I do always shake your flow trail You always want to put a little bit on the bottom first, otherwise this will get stuck to the bottom and you might get a chunk of it later. And this one is fairly thin so you don't have to be as careful about it. And I don't actually add that much paint because, like I said, I like the result of the transparent look so I add a lot less paint than other people do. So I'm going to show you a different, a few different brands because there is no measurement if you're comparing different brands. So this one mixes in easily but if you, if when you see we'll use golden it takes forever to mix so this one's pretty easy and since it is kind of a cheaper paint I'm going to add one more glob there. And then the reason I like this in Soho brand is if you do it and you say, oh, I need a little bit more, you can't really add this heavy body golden. You'll, you'll have chunks forever. Whereas you can you can add a little extra of this after you've already mixed it up and it won't be a big problem. So then, excuse the thunder. So then I'll add this gloss medium. It always gets little chunks there. So I don't add as much as Mina Villegas does, so... She actually was the one that I got this from. Um, when I first started, I would just use Floetrol. It literally took over a week for the paintings to dry. And they would drip off the edge and you'd get a white rim. And she mentioned this and I kind of didn't use it because it seemed expensive and, you know, I'm cheap and I didn't want to, um, to do it. But it started to get really annoying that I couldn't do any paintings because 
I really wouldn't have any room left on the table, and if your table was even remotely not level, it would basically drip off overnight while it sat there. So this stuff is good because it gives you a little bit of extra time to work um, than the pouring medium, but it will start to dry within a day or so, and you don't have to worry about it just dripping forever. Um, so I do add this, and I add, add this to my float extender a little bit too, which I know is a little bit wasteful, but it really does make a huge difference. And it also helps, she says, with stretching the paint. So when you're stretching it really thin, um, it helps it not break up and make and make it look ugly. So I kind of agree with her on this one. This one is sort of worth it to me, especially with the way I do mine. So I don't really add that much. For this size container, which is about six ounces, I'll put in a couple of squirts. I don't want to put too much because it does dry a little faster. So I did notice when I started using this, if I don't hold the cups and put the lids on them like this, it will start to get crusty on the edge. So you kind of want a balance of drying fast and still having some of the effects. So that's usually about enough for me. So this one stirred up really well. So next we're going to add some more. Probably a little too much. And I also use these reusable stir sticks because paint fluid art is a little bit wasteful. It's kind of bad for the environment, hence the paper towels. That's why I use this so I don't have to use as many paper towels. So at least this is one thing that I can kind of reuse a little bit. And then these cups are really nice because you can close them up and add more to it, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, not like I get new cups each time, I, I just use the old cups and add more paint to them. So when you're stirring, you want to check... Probably can't get that on the camera. You want to check the edges and make sure you scrape around the edges. Which is why you kind of want these flat sticks. So make sure you're scraping along the edge the whole time. So I alternate between stirring on the bottom and then scraping on the edge. And that will help you get incorporated so you don't end up with... Oh, I can't show you where it will tip. So you just want to stir around the edges, scrape it, especially if you're using a different type of paint, you want to make sure it's all stirred up. So this one's super easy to stir. I mean, it doesn't take much time at all. So with just these ingredients, you can see, because I thickened up the flow trial, we won't have to add as much of the um, acrylic gloss gel. Let me get this. You can see, um, this, you know, everybody on YouTube is like, mound and a mound and a mound. Well, that's like any of these stages in between here. It makes a mound and a mound and a mound. So that was kind of a not so useful description for me. So I like to do like a circle. You do a circle you can see the trace, so you should see this shows up as you do that. Um, but then the one thing that's more precise that I do and really helped in the beginning when I was using a bunch of different brands is, especially with, you need these kind of fat stir sticks. So my technique is to take up a pile and blob it on top and then count how many seconds it takes for it to disappear and you gotta get the right angle of the sunshine to see the blob or maybe this way so you see how it disappears so just make your blob and then count so for me I know that my the way I count it's between three and four seconds so I'll make a blob one two three four so that was too fast it one, two, three, four. So it's disappearing right around three. Oops, I was off camera. So make a blob count. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And so you gotta get the right angle when you're doing this to, can't do it because I overfilled the cup, but one, two, three. So make sure you look for my angle because it will leave a little 
spot even when it's already incorporated into the just leaves a little bit of an area you can kind of see where it went down based on the color but basically flop it one two three one two three so I need between three and four for it to work for me that's my secret number and the way I count one two three so if you count a little slower your number might be a little bit different but basically I want it between three and four and if it's a metallic you're gonna want it to be a little bit closer to four so one two three so we need to add some more of this acrylic gloss medium because it's not thick enough so because I pre diluted this with some Floetrol it's a little bit thinner and I know that we can add it directly with no clumps if I wasn't showing you how to do this I would have just added it at the same time as the paint because I know I need to at least two scoops usually this time of year anyway so So I, I stir kind of like this, do little circles in the middle. For me that makes it stir better and then you do the side scraping too. Okay, so now we'll just count again. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So it's almost at four. Two, three, four. Unfortunately, I can't get it in the sun. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's actually pretty close to perfect. One, two, three, four. Actually, um, I do recommend, based on the paint that you have, that you, when you're first doing this, kind of mix it up to at least like the three second mark. And leave a little space because like Amsterdam paints they seem to thicken up if you let them sit some of them don't but that one in particular I've noticed thickens up so I use the circle before I pour things because it's pretty good too but in the beginning I did the counting so stir it up one two three four so that one is between three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I can't really show you. Maybe. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm just gotta try and make a big blob. One, two, three, four. Maybe on the edge. One, two, three, four. Whatever you need to do so you can see it. Two, three, four. There we go. One, two, three, four. And I just made a mess. Okay, it's really hard to get this on camera. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you see how you see this trace here? Um, that's, you know, that's going to show up and it doesn't really count. So you, that's why you really need to look from an angle and see when the mound has actually disappeared. Not, not when you have this little halo still, because that will always be there. One, two, three. Oops, don't put the stick in there. One, two, three, four. See? One, two, three, four. So it's between three and four. So I like the regular colors to be between three and four. And then the metallics like to be closer to four. So where's my lids? So with these cups, you do want to clean the edges if possible because it will start to dry and kind of make a mess. So I'll just leave that one there for now. But usually I would close it up. So for this one, I'm going to do the 24 carat gold everybody uses and I don't use the extreme machine because the extreme machine does not like me and it just bubbles up until it makes I made probably 15 gold rock paintings in the beginning they just the extreme machine does not like me I don't know how people get it to work but it just becomes a big old rock and that's not what I was going for so this one this one's kind of thicker but some of the other colors uh, I think copper especially I found to be really thin. So you have to add kind of a lot of this for it to show up, so it's about that much for now. I always change my mind and add a little bit more later. 
I don't like the gold to be overwhelming. I've had a few paintings where I basically felt like it ruined the painting because it was so strong and so thick. Even with just this little amount in there, it's basically perfect. So it does require a lot more than the other types of paint. So we'll just add two, three, usually three, maybe four squirts of this. So not as much as Nina. She does the whole bottom. And if you have a paint that's hard to incorporate like a uh, golden, this stuff makes it um, stir in a lot faster for some reason. So if you're having trouble getting it incorporated, put this in first and then put in your flow trail. So and I do actually add my magic gloss medium and varnish to this as well just because it's just way too overpowering um, but in the winter I might only need one scoop of this so you're unfortunately it really depends on the weather how your flow draw looks um, kind of depends on what kind of stuff that you got from the store so the flow trawl is very very iffy I've had some good containers that needed nothing and then pretty much all too thin since then so that's why I started evaporating it out, which I think works pretty well. So these were the evaporated out Fotrol, and I've, I've only had to add a couple of scoops of this gloss medium when previously, and I did it recently, I've had to add four or five scoops of the gloss medium. So. A lot cheaper to evaporate out the $15 flow trawl and make it a little thicker than it is to buy the gloss medium. It's kind of expensive, so that's why I tried it. So. Just out of habit, I always make the circle first now because now I'm used to it. So it's just easy to see. If you see no circle any at all, then you know you need to add more right away. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So that's falling in. So the gold and the metallics, you gotta be careful because it will leave a mark and it will look like it's not incorporated. So you really need to look at this one from the side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So it's actually going in at three, so it needs some more. And you'll get used to it when you're doing it. Um, flow trawl can make colors look a little bit light at first, so to me this looks like maybe I need some more gold, but I know if I let it sit longer it probably doesn't need more gold, but we'll add just a little bit more just to be sure. And then since it's thin, I'm going to add just a little bit more of this. So if you evaporate out your flow trawl, and you're stirring it in this container and you do the trace and you see a circle or a mound form that's like one or two, like three seconds, then you're already starting off with kind of what you're looking for. And so when I'm evaporating out the flow trowel, which when it's rainy or the winter, sometimes it's a little harder to evaporate it out. But so far, after two or three days, it will evaporate out enough and if you have it already doing like one, two, three, then you can add as little paint as you need because it's basically already the right consistency. But because I am thinning it so much to get the effect I want, I do like the strawberry, not the gloss medium. I do like to add this because I feel like it adds just a little bit of extra structure. So these two together, even when you're thinning out the actual paint, these are like a transparent version of the paint binder so it helps it not get goofy or separate out um, so it's, I kind of like to add at least one of those two things to help it out. I've never actually had a paint that I had to add water to with the spin flow trawl that I've gotten um, except for the Artist Loft White. So one, two, three, so one, two, three. So it's in between one, two, three, four. In between three and four, so one, two, three, two, three. So because 
I have to put all of my paint into the refrigerator. Um, I know that we mixed up the blue to between three and four, so um, that one won't go in the refrigerator. So because it's different for me because it's hot, I'm going to actually leave this at three and a half because I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and it will get really, really thick otherwise. So it's really all depends on your environment and if you're not going to be putting them in the fridge. Um, so I need to make mine so that they're perfect from the refrigerator, not perfect on the bench. So unfortunately we'd have to wait four or five months for it to get cold. Um, so I had, I'm making this video now a little bit early, but I just, I just, you know, it's all about where you live and what you have, so if you're just going to use it and not put them in the refrigerator, then make it perfect. As a gold, you would want this to be four seconds. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to do it for the refrigerator because that's what I use, but in the winter, I would do it so it's four on the table. So here we're going to make the golden thalo turquoise. So I'm adding in the gloss medium first, since this paint is a little thicker and it helps it dissolve. I'm sorry, my phone ate the audio, so I'm doing a voice voiceover for the rest of the mixing part. So I'm going to add a little bit here. It's, it's high in pigment, so you don't need as much, but I'm still going to add quite a bit. I'll fast forward through the rest of this to make it a little faster since the audio um, disappeared. It also deleted my PBO iridescent paint mixing portion of the video, so sorry I'm, I, I lost that portion, but we have these three examples, so you kind of get the idea from these three examples. So if you're going to use these all in the same day, you would want to check these right before you mix to make sure that they're the same consistency. So you want to make sure they're all the same consistency right before you pour. One of the things is these little 99 cent type of craft paints. They don't really behave very well. You'll have to add a lot of acrylic medium to get it to be thick enough. They kind of tend to separate um, in the painting. I haven't had a lot of luck with this. but. It's really not worth it to me to buy these little ones unless you're buying like an Extreme Sheen Metallic or some other like metallics that you're going to use once in a while. It's okay, but like the plain colors, they're just not very good quality and they tend to do weird things. And so you can basically buy all of these um, paint brands for $5 or less, um, especially the Cheap Joe's one. Um, it's a really big container. It's very thick actually. It's a pretty good deal. But Amsterdam paints are super nice, and they're 4 or $5 usually. Blick has their own version. So I would really buy these if possible instead of these craft paints. And so if you look at video 7, again, you can you can learn how to read the pigments on the side. Uh, and it will help you um, figure out what you need to buy. So you can buy fewer of these if you know how to read the pigments. Instead of buying a lot of these, you can make a lot of colors if you look at the pigment 
Um, so check out video 7 if you haven't already on that. Hopefully you found these tips helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.